Hi, it's DeWire. It is Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you see it all the time in basketball. The guy who doesn't have blazing speed, right? Chris Mullet. Uh, these days, Luka Doncic doesn't have blazing speed. But yet he knows the sport to the point where he can come right down the lane without hustling and finish the layup. He can rely on an outside shot and get it off in traffic without hustling, without running through a series of picks, right? The guy just understands the sport well enough where he can play it in third gear. He's not in a rush. He doesn't have to be the best athlete. He just knows how to win. Now there's a fight here. It's part of the card for the Andy Ruiz Chris Ariola card. Right? It's in the welterweight division. It features experienced veteran Javier Molina going up against a savant. This guy is young. I think he's 20 years old. His name is Jesus Mono Ramos. Remember that name, Jesus Mono Ramos. You need to look at this fight just to do research. Because I believe Ramos is going to be in major fights going forward. I'm picking Ramos over Molina, right? I'm picking the 20-year-old over the 31-year-old in part because Molina has been fighting at lower weight classes. Right, 140, 141. And this fight is at welterweight. In part because Molina isn't a puncher. He only has a 36% KO rate. Meanwhile, Ramos is a major puncher. Right, his KO rate is up in the 90s. Also, Molina is a guy who likes to come forward. He likes to be on his front foot. But he's not a lead puncher. He's a counter, he's a counter puncher, and he's not high volume. So he's going to be in there, right, looking for counters, but doesn't have the power to knock you out. Now, what might not be apparent here is that he's going up against a savant. By that I mean a guy who just intrinsically knows the sport. Now let me say this, and it needs to be considered. Because Ramos has been very successful in his career, he's an unbeaten fighter, I have not seen him hurt in a fight, nor have I seen him on his back foot in a fight. In my favorites folder, I have highlights of two of his recent fights, He's just hitting the prime time now, right? But let's just say what I do see is phenomenal. This is a young guy who's not in a rush. Again, he's the Luka Doncic of boxing. He's not in a rush, but yet he's defensively blessed. You'll notice the guy just intrinsically knows the angles, knows how to defend himself. You don't find a lot of KO punchers, right? This guy has a Deontay Wilder KO type percentage who have actually mastered defense, right? This guy has mastered defense at 20 years old. In other words, he can come in the pocket, punches can be thrown. You'll notice the punches coming back at him. He's either out of position for the punch to land or he has a hand up. He's very conscious of defense. He's also two-handed. 
right? The two fights that I have in my favorites folder are knockouts using different hands. In one, he takes out the guy. He's a southpaw. That's the other wrinkle, right? He takes out the guy with his right hand. Right, and I'm talking about brutal chaos where he hits guys and they drop. The other fight, he takes out the guy with a looping left hand. You realize that this guy has one punch KO power in both hands. Right, you realize too that the guy is not a headhunter. Because you'll notice the guy slowly go to an opponent's body. This is while, of course, he has prodigious power. Right? He, he knows how to throw headshots. But this is the young guy who understands that he needs to bank body shots to completely wither you. Now, let me say, 147 is loaded right now. Right? You have Terrence Crawford. You have Errol Spence. You have Manny Pacquiao. You have Mikey Garcia. You have Keith Thurman. You have Danny Garcia. You have Sean Porter. Right? It, it's loaded right now. But let me just say the young guys in the division are already competitive with the guys I've just named. I privately believe, well, I've said it publicly, that the number one boxing prospect in the sport, as I see it, is Virgil Ortiz. Now, I don't know how much longer Ortiz is going to last at 147. Let's just say Ortiz has above average defense. But Jesus Mono Ramos is actually better defensively than him, in my opinion. Right? What separates Ortiz is Ortiz has one of boxing's best jabs. And it's not even a punch he highlights. Right? He's a heavy hooker. Heavy hooker. But you notice when he throws his jab, it stops traffic. Now, Jesus Ramos doesn't have that level of jab. Right? Maybe he does and just hasn't been throwing it. But let's just say, I think Virgil Ortiz is boxing's best prospect on the very short list of boxing's best prospect. And I'm not talking about in the welterweight division, folks. I'm talking about in every weight class that I know of. <clears throat> on the very short list is Jaron Ennis. Right, who's also a heavy puncher, like Virgil Ortiz. I believe on the short list as well has to be Jesus Mono Ramos. In other words, you want to look at this fight because Javier Molina arguably is the most accomplished opponent Ramos will have fought to date. I'm just telling you that Ramos openly says in interviews that he wants a world title by the time he's 21. When you look at the young man closely, you understand that the people around him know he's a savant. In fact, the guy spars <clears throat> with Terrence Crawford. He's getting world-class sparring. Let's just say... This guy is arguably sparring with the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? And I feel he's one of the best in the sport pound for pound as a prospect. Right? In terms of prospects. Uh, let me also say, too, that it's interesting. Crawford's really interesting because Crawford also spars with Shakur Stevenson. Right? So Crawford is as prepared as a guy can be. The reason why sparring with Crawford is better than sparring with almost anyone else is because, as I like to say, Crawford is the New England Patriots of boxing. Right? Crawford's a different fighter depending on his opponent. So I would imagine sparring partners would 
see a multifaceted great fighter who's a future Hall of Famer who's still unbeaten as I make this video. And I'm sure Jesus Ramos, by being in the ring with Crawford, has learned some of the techniques that already has him with great defense at 20 years old. So, Javier Molina has never been stopped in a fight. Never. I think that streak of luck ends here. I think Jesus Ramos on a highly regarded fight card involving former heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz and former heavyweight contender Chris Ariola. I believe Jesus Ramos is going to try to make a statement. And my goodness, the guy has the skills to deliver on it. Southpaw, two-handed power, can loop his punches, is excellent defensively, is very accurate, is higher volume than Javier Molina. Right? Doesn't have to worry that much about Molina's power. I like Jesus Ramos here. I think he's one of the most advanced prospects in boxing. The only reason I'm calling him a prospect is because he's 20 years old. And he hasn't yet fought people like Terrence Crawford in a real fight, Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Mikey Garcia, right? The established guard, right? But make no mistake, this guy is ready right now, right? His sparring is with the best in the sport, right? The guy quite frankly, has figured out the sport, just like Luka Doncic, where he doesn't have to move fast to land punches, right? He has the punches blocked. He already knows that if he's over on one side, you can't hit him with the hand that's farthest away. In other words, you're, the only way you know he's 20 and not 28, is when the announcer tells you, oh yeah, this guy's 20, right? Also, he looks young, right? But the guy knows he's special, and the guy hits hard, right? Let's just say he's in the top 20% of the sport in terms of punching power already, right? And when you watch him and you see how wide apart his feet are, you think he can't move and get leverage at the same time, but he can. Now, where it gets interesting is I wonder what happens if he fights a guy who's a little bit more fluid and faster, like Jaron Ennis, right, who might be able to land punches more quickly or at least force a slugger like Ramos to pick up his feet a little bit. Right, let's just say the jury's still out. I get the feeling we're going to see that fight eventually. I get the feeling we're going to see Ramos against Ortiz eventually. Understand, Teofimo Lopez has openly talked about moving up in weight. I think long term, we're going to see Teofimo Lopez against Jesus Ramos eventually. I believe this guy is a world-class fighter who's going to be on the public stage for several years. Well, he's breaking out big time here on the undercard of the Ruiz-Chris Ariola fight. Make sure you're in front of the TV when he takes on Javier Molina. I'm expecting Ramos to win that fight by stoppage. And understand, Molina is a KG vet who went the distance with Jose Pedraza, who I consider very high-end. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I like Ramos over Molina. I'm going to sprinkle some on Ramos by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you.
I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.